Welcome back to Paint Society. In this video, I'm gonna tell you what part of your gun you need to remove to get excellent finishes. Don't overthink it, it's just paint. And thanks for joining me again on this video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Brian and this is a channel where we learn how to paint, whether it's your first time picking up a paint gun or if you're a seasoned veteran. I'm gonna show you how this little piece of plastic is keeping you from beautiful paint jobs. Let's head into the mixing room. Now I still remember the moment when I opened up my very first paint gun and I opened up all the components and I laid them down on the table and I wasn't quite sure what some of them were. And I remember seeing this little guy right here and thinking, is this a part of the packaging or is this something that the gun needs? And well, I kind of figured it out by looking at the diagram that this little guy right here is a filter. And this little filter comes right in here and will sit right into the paint gun. But then I got thinking, what happens after you use it the first time? Well, years went by and I just started to not use it and I wasn't sure if I was doing something wrong, but my paint jobs were coming out really, really good in my home garage. So then I thought, let me try and put it back in and see if that was a common denominator that really messed up the paint jobs. And well, when I put it back into my paint gun at the time, a Harbor Freight, I could see that it really restricted the paint going down into the gun body. Here's why. You see, this is a filter and the concept is really good. It will filter your paint and keep it clean. But what happens once it dries up and starts to clog up the paint gun and leave flaking paint inside the gun and body? That's when you decide you just don't need it. But what do you do? Well, the solution is very simple. And well, the paint supplier will give these to you for free. That's right. They still give away free things and wood sticks as well. So these are actually strainers and these will strain your paint prior to you going into your paint gun. Now, why do you need to strain your paint? Well, when this paint is put into the toners, it can be sometimes dirty. Sometimes the metallics are dirty as well. And it's always a very good practice to strain your paint first so that it won't get onto the panel. We wanna to try to eliminate all the factors we can for something to potentially go wrong. I'm gonna show you how easy it is. You can even take two paint strainers, put them together, and we have our Milano Red mix up here, and it's ready to go. It's pre-mixed, and that will strain up all of our paint and make sure that we don't have any sort of contaminants, dust, particles, things of that nature getting into our paint job. It strains pretty quick, and we're ready to go, but there's one more line of defense. And that would be our PPS cup lids. Now there's two different types. There's one for water base and there's one for solvent. The water base, it has a tighter mesh, okay? So it will filter even better. The solvent base is a little bit of wider mesh, all right? So between these two, we can use this if you feel like you need a little bit extra protection. And I don't really see any effects of it slowing down and still getting enough paint through the paint gun. Now, let me show you what we have to paint. And this is our trunk of our EM1 project, our Honda Civic SI. You can see it is already primer in our red color build primer, and we're ready to spray on some paint. So let's see how well the finish goes down. Getting our gun body ready, we will not use this filter. We will put it to the side, and we'll just put it in our adapter. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the PPS adapter kit, this is an adapter that fits onto the PPS cup and liner system. Once the paint is ready, then depending on which lid system you're using, you can go ahead and clip it on. For those of you that are having problems of spilling with these liners, it's because you're doing it wrong and you're in a rush. Don't be in a rush. You put it on, you clip it, you hold it up, you check to make sure everything is sealed, then seal it down and give it a quarter turn and she's good to go. You'll never have to worry about it pouring out while you're painting. From there, our special adapter will clip right in with a quarter turn and we are good to spray. As a final line of defense, I'm using a tack rag and I'll go over in one direction just to make sure we got any last minute lint off of the trunk. 
I prefer not to tack in between coats because it can add a little bit of dirt. And if you clean your surface thoroughly, you shouldn't have to worry about tacking it too much. From here, I'm ready to spray. I'm gonna spray using the DV1 1.3 right around 15 to 16 PSI. We'll lay on our coat first, nice and even. We won't go too wet. We'll introduce the base coat to the surface. And then once this first coat is down, we'll allow this to flash for a good five to 10 minutes and then apply our second coat. There it goes, walk away. You can see it's wet, but there's no dust particles in the surface and this will flash off nicely. After it's flashed, it will have a satin look or a flat look. This is an indication that we're ready for our second coat. When we briefly put our hand on top, we can see it's super smooth. Make sure you're doing this with a glove. Our second coat will put on a little bit heavier, but not too heavy. Remember, thin, wet coats. After that second coat, you can see the coverage is fantastic. I still think we need one more, so let's let it flash five to 10 minutes. Our second coat is all flashed off, and although it looks completely covered, I always tell you, get coverage plus one coat. After the third coat, I've got complete coverage and I'm gonna allow this to flash for 20 minutes before a clear coat. You don't want any of the solvents from the base piercing up through the clear, so give it time to completely flash off. You'll see once this is flashed, it will have a different sheen to it. While our base is flashing, let's go ahead and get our clear coat mixed up. This is the clear we're using on this vehicle because it is a full restoration. It's a very high gloss clear coat. This clear coat mixes up two to one. This is the hard cup. Once again, the liner goes inside. Now straining clear is not as necessary as straining sealers and base coat. However, let's eliminate as many factors as we can and leave nothing to chance. So once again, we have our strainer and we'll strain our hardener as well. Now, since I want my clear coat to flow through the paint gun a little bit quicker, I will be opting for the bigger strainer from the PPS liner and lid system. I'll clip it on once again. I'll lift it up and then I'll do a core turn and I'm good to go. Let's see if we're ready for clear coat. Based off how this looks, it's got a nice even sheen across the whole surface and I would say it's ready. Now, what is the indication that you are gonna have a nice finish and dust-free? Well, if this goes on here and glides super smooth like that, then that means you're gonna have a nice surface. Let's say I put this here and I went to let it go and it got stuck. If it got stuck in the middle, that means you're gonna to need to go ahead and sand this down a little bit and apply another couple coats, maybe using P800.
After it's been sprayed, it looks fantastic. No dirt, very clean finish. And we use simple techniques and simple patterns that you can do by straining your paint and getting rid of that little filter in the paint gun. I gotta say, that looks good. Now, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Check out my old videos and upcoming videos as well. A lot of great tips and tricks that you can apply right now in your home garage and get great results just like we have here. Guys, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it, it's just paint. I'll see you guys on the next one.